All right, let's get into our interview then at this point. As we noted a little bit earlier, we'd speak just about uh, the number of cases, uh, not just of COVID-19, but in this time of COVID-19, we have the labor situation, unemployment in South Africa going up to around 30.1%. We're chatting now to Niva, uh, who, Ma, uh, Niva Machetla, who is, of course, a senior economist as well then uh, at the uh, at TIPS, which is indeed the uh, uh, Trade and Industrial Policy Strategies uh, entity also known as TIPS. Niva, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Unemployment continues to surge. We could see even more numbers falling. We're supposed to try and help as many people as possible, even with the uh, loan guarantee scheme that South Africa has. But for now, we continue to struggle. Do we even have the right policies in place? Yeah, I think part of the problem is I don't know if there's any policy that would fix the situation as long as the pandemic is still out of control. I mean, I Can think the... the Economists agree that the most important thing, if we want to save jobs, is to stop the contagion as far as possible. Um, the fact is the economy cannot create jobs as long as people are unable to function normally, either as consumers or as workers. Having said that, the, the, what has made a huge difference is the COVID-19 tours program at, from the Unemployment Insurance Fund, which is providing at least some payments to around a third of the private formal workforce. Niva, at the same time, you know, we keep speaking about these reforms. We keep asking people whether we're able to get things actually moving for this economy. We want to pump more money into it. But sadly, we just seem to continuously just have more meetings. We have a whole lot more discussion points, maybe even uh, an indaba of sorts to try and get this jobs issue down. But it's, it's the most stubborn element, perhaps, of South Africa's economy as well, where we just can't seem to get it right. Are we just... Uh, a, a country that continues to have policies and meetings and not actually get some action done. You know, I actually think that's really unfair. And the reason I'm saying that is I think it underestimates how big the damage was, structural damage was done to the economy by apartheid. And in particular, the fact that people were, you know, the destruction of African businesses and African farming. So if you look at our employment ratio in South Africa around four out of every 10 working age people say they're employed. In other similar economies, that is upper middle income economies, it's around six out of 10. But when you look at what really makes a difference, it's that many more people in those countries are still basically smallholders and subsistence farmers. And I'm not saying we can put that back, but I do think that's a big structural difference that you know, the, the, the really big difference in our employment ratio is because of what apartheid did to ensure that the majority of people don't have the productive assets they need to support themselves. And that's not easily remedied. So I'm not saying we did the best possible things, but I also think we shouldn't act as if it's like somehow just a policy issue. And then the one other thing I would really flag is that I do think when you have a mining dependent economy and the, you know, during commodity booms, there was a boom in international metals prices from 2002 to 2010, and then prices, sorry, 2011. And then the prices, of our major exports dropped by between 50 and 60%. And the COVID-19 pandemic is pushing those prices down again. And so if you look at growth in the South African economy, it has correlated in the last 20 years very closely with international export prices for our major mining commodities. So again, the problem with being in a mining dependent economy is when things are booming like they were before 2010, everything looks good. When prices fall, then you start seeing the weaknesses in the economy. Yeah. I, I mean, you've worked on, on quite a few documents with regards to how we can ease down the process for uh, particularly for South Africa's jobless situation. Um, has the message been heard? Are we actually speaking in the same uh, sort of tones, languages and the like? Well, as I'm sure you know, I think we should be a lot more radical. But I think that, you know, part of the problem is it's easy to say that. I do think that the other thing we have that we haven't talked about is we are economically one of the most unequal countries in the world. And that makes it very, very hard to agree on what we should be doing. Now, I actually do agree that I think government should take more leadership and take more risks. But part of the problem is to fix these things. Some people who are now doing quite well will have to take some hits. I mean, they, if you say, for instance, 
we want to move away from mining into other kinds of industries, it means, for instance, Transnet would have to say, how do they provide rail not just to ship out, you know, ore and coal, but to actually support manufacturing, and that's much riskier and often less profitable. So it's easy to say do it in principle, but in practice, it's hard. Yeah, Neva, really appreciate the time to, to always chat to you. Always great insight coming from you. And indeed, perhaps more radical is exactly what the country needs at a time like this. Neva Machetla is the senior economist in uh, trade, uh, and, uh, trade and Industrial Policy Strategies, also known as TIPS, joining us there. Now, of course,